Hello, my name is Stormy Benzie. Today I'm here with Jaden. Today is April 26, 2022. Um, this is for my language methods and strategies class, and this is week two skills application. It is a first grade oral and language activity. So, like I said, Jaden, today we are going to be reading a story. Um, the story, or we are going to be watching a video about it because I do not, I could not find a copy of it. So I found a read aloud online so we could use the computer. And this is the story of Ruby Bridges. In the story of Ruby Bridges, oops, I'm gonna have to stop and restart. Okay, never mind. Got it figured out. All right. So like I was saying, today we are going to be watching a video, a read aloud of the story of Ruby Bridges. It is by Robert Coles, and it is illustrated by George Ford. And here's a picture right here on the screen that you can see of the book. So, all right. So like I said, we're going to start off by reading that. Um, After we read that, like I said, we today, after we read this video or watch the read aloud, um, we are going to talk about it. You're going to ask any questions that you might have about the story that you've had while we were watching it. And then I'm going to ask you questions about what happened in the story. So a big thing about what we're going to do today is while we're watching the story, I want you just to try to really remember what the story is about. Just really listen to it and focus on, you know, what's happening in the story, you know, who the main character is, you know, what is she doing? You know, the story is called, you know, the story of Ruby Bridges. So it's obviously about Ruby Bridges. You know, it's about her and her going to school and, you know, her experience because back in, oh, I was trying to think of a year exactly. I can't think of it at the top of my head. Um, but back, you know, there used to be only, they had schools separated. Girls that were little boys and girls who were white and little boys and girls who were black went to different schools. Because that's, I don't know if you, how much you've learned about slavery and stuff in school yet, but unfortunately that was how it used to be in the day. And this is a story of a little girl named Ruby Bridges. So she was one of the first black little girls to go to an all white school. And so this story is about that and how people reacted and how it made her feel. So we're going to start off by watching that. And then, like I said, if you have any questions, just say something and I can pause the video and we can talk about it if anything specific in the story happens because that's the main point of this is we want to we want to talk about it like I said I want you to ask questions I'm going to ask you questions we just we're going to talk and see what we can find out all right so make sure the volume's up I'm Miss S today we are going to read the story of Ruby Bridges written by Robert Coles and illustrated by George Ford. This book was suggested by Miss St. Facile's third grade class. Thank you. Ruby Bridges was born in a small cabin near Tylertown, Mississippi. We were very poor, very, very poor, Ruby said. My daddy worked picking crops. We just barely got by. There were times when we didn't have much to eat. The people who owned the land were bringing in machines to pick the crops. So my daddy lost his job. And that's when we had to move. I remember us leaving. I was four, I think. In 1957, the family moved to New Orleans. Ruby's father became a janitor. Her mother took care of the children during the day. After they were tucked in bed, Ruby's mother went to work scrubbing the floors in a bank. Every Sunday, the family went to church. We wanted our children to be near God's spirit, Ruby's mother said. We wanted them to start feeling close to him from the very start. At that time, black children and white children went to separate schools in New Orleans. The black children were not able to receive the same education as the white children. It wasn't fair, and it was against the nation's law. In 1960, a judge ordered four black girls to go to two white elementary schools. Three of the girls were sent to McDonough 19. Six-year-old Ruby Bridges was sent to first grade in the William France Elementary School. 
Ruby's parents were proud that their daughter had been chosen to take part in an important event in American history. They went to church. We sat there and prayed to God, Ruby's mother said, that we'd all be strong and we'd have courage and we'd get through any trouble and Ruby would be a good girl and she'd hold her head up high and be a credit to her own people and a credit to all the American people. We prayed long and we prayed hard. On Ruby's first day, a large crowd of angry white people gathered outside the France elementary school. The people carried signs that said they didn't want black children in a white school. People called Ruby names. Some wanted to hurt her. The city and state police did not help Ruby. The president of the United States ordered federal marshals to walk with Ruby into the school building. The marshals carried guns. Every day for weeks that turned into months, Ruby experienced that kind of school day. She walked into the France school surrounded by marshals, wearing a clean dress and a bow in her hair and carrying her lunch pail. Ruby walked slowly for the first few blocks. As Ruby approached the school, she saw a crowd of people marching up and down the street. Men and women and children shouted at her. They pushed towards her. The marshals kept them from Ruby by threatening to arrest them. Ruby would hurry through the crowd and not say a word. The white people in the neighborhood would not send their children to school. When Ruby got inside the building, she was all alone, except for her teacher, Miss Henry. There were no other children to keep Ruby company, to play with and learn with, to eat lunch with. But every day, Ruby went into the classroom with a big smile on her face, ready to get down to the business of learning. She was polite and she worked well at her desk, Miss Henry said. She enjoyed her time there. She didn't seem nervous or anxious or irritable or scared. She seemed as normal and relaxed as any child I've ever taught. So Ruby began learning how to read and write in an empty classroom in an empty building. Sometimes I'd look at her and wonder how she did it, said Miss Henry. How she went by those mobs and sat here all by herself and yet seemed so relaxed and comfortable. Miss Henry would question Ruby in order to find out if the girl was really nervous and afraid, even though she seemed so calm and confident. But Ruby kept saying she was doing fine. The teacher decided to wait and see if Ruby would keep on being so relaxed and hopeful or if she gradually began to wear down or even decide that she no longer wanted to go to school. Then one morning, something happened. Miss Henry stood by a window in her class, as she usually did, watching Ruby walk towards the school. Suddenly, Ruby stopped, right in front of the mob of howling and screaming people. She stood there facing all those men and women. She seemed to be talking to them. Miss Henry saw Ruby's lips moving and wondered what Ruby could be saying. The crowd seemed ready to kill her. The marshals were frightened. They tried to persuade Ruby to move along. They tried to hurry her into the school, but Ruby wouldn't budge. Then Ruby stopped talking and walked into the school. When she went into the classroom, Miss Henry asked her what happened. Miss Henry told Ruby that she would have been watching and that she was surprised when Ruby stopped and talked with the people in the mob. Ruby became irritated. I didn't stop and talk with them, she said. Ruby, I saw you talking, Miss Henry said. I saw your lips moving. I wasn't talking, said Ruby. I was praying. I was praying for them. Every morning, Ruby had stopped a few blocks away from school to say a prayer for the people who hated her. This morning, she forgot until she was already in the middle of the angry mob. When school was over for the day, Ruby hurried through the mob as usual. After she walked a few blocks and the crowd was behind, Ruby said the prayer she repeated twice a day, before and after school. Please God, try to forgive those people. 
because even if they say those bad things, they don't know what they're doing. So you could forgive them, just like you did those folks a long time ago when they said terrible things about you. By the time Ruby was in second grade, the mobs have given up their struggle to scare Ruby and defeat the federal judge's order that New Orleans schools be desegregated so that children of all races might be in the same classroom. Year after year, Ruby went to the France school. She graduated from it, then went on to graduate from high school. The end. I hope you enjoyed- All right, so there is the story of Ruby Bridges. Like I said, she was a little girl who in New Orleans, lived in New Orleans, and at the time it was against the law for black kids and white kids to go to the same school. And so they changed the law and she got to go to the white children's school. After reading that, or reading that, I keep saying the wrong thing. After watching that, I say we could, if you need to, we can watch it, some parts of it again. But do you have any questions or about what happened at any point? Say, I was like, like I said, the part of this is us talking about the story now. It's like, that's what we, we got to do. So what... You know, I guess what we could talk about what happened. What do you, what was the big things that you would have? Well, not any questions you have, but how would you, if, if I didn't watch this video with you and I asked you, what was the story about? What would you tell me? I was like, we watched it. If we have to, we can watch it again. Ruby Bridges? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, of course. Ruby Bridges. And what, so what happened to Ruby? What did she do? Well, she went to the light. In school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you re okay? Awesome. So yeah. So, do you remember why I said why and black children went to different schools, or why the book said? No, because back in the day, back when this happened, and she said it was 1950 something. It was against the law. It wasn't allowed. If black children and white children went to the same school, the black children would get in trouble, and their parents might even go to jail. That's just back in the. You know, back in the 50s and before that, everything was segregated. White people and black people had their own bathrooms. They had their own water fountains. They had, you know, if you if we all wanted to go, you know, their own churches, their own schools. If we all decided we wanted to go to the same thing, there'd be separate seating. White people would sit over here and black people would sit over there. Luckily, a lot has changed in, you know, the last 50 years or so. And that is not how it is anymore. We... A lot of laws have been passed, and it is actually now the opposite. It is illegal to segregate people like that because it's not right. No one should ever be ba judged based on the color of their skin because we're all the same. We all bleed the same. We all look like on the inside. Every single one of us looks the same. So, all right. So then there was that. Um, so do you remember, like I said, like you, or like you said, that she went to law by school? Do you remember what? the adults, what the white adults did, what happened when she went to that white school. I was like, she went on a walk to school every day, but what happened? What did the, what did everyone do? All the white adults. Oh. It'll, it'll be okay. I paused it so she'd stop barking, but she's not listening. So we're just going to have to keep going. So Okay, so I asked you, you said no, but like I said, remember, you know, it, I almost said Izzy, Ruby had to walk to school, and you know, what, do you remember what the white people, I'm sorry, I have, all right, so, okay, sorry, I know I had to stop twice now, okay, so, like I was asking, she, you know, was on her way to school, what did the white adults do when she was on her way to school, you know, they weren't, they didn't do nothing, you know. In the book, they were doing something when she walked into the school. Do you remember what they were doing? Were they were they all there to be nice and greet her and say welcome? Or was it something else? Something else. You know, what, what, what were they doing? Were they being nice and happy that she was there? If we think about it. Because I can flip to the pictures, like it said, if I go here. You know, it shows right here. It says, you know, it shows them holding up signs that say "Why only." If we go to the words, it says that they were calling her names, and some even wanted to hurt her. That, that's yeah, that's why I was saying we were supposed to. 
watch the video. <laughs> it said it in the book. That's why we read it. So yeah, like I was saying, because they didn't think they didn't think she should go to that school. All right. So back to the questions. So uh, were there how many students were in Ruby's class? Zero. Zero. Do you? It was only her. Yeah, it was only her. Do you know why? Because mom or dad wouldn't let her go. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of yeah. So it was kind of like the same reason that the adults were standing outside yelling at her, you know, and calling her names. They didn't want her to go to the school. They thought that that they thought black children and white children shouldn't go to the same school. That it wasn't right. But we know now that they weren't right. That everyone should be able to go to the same school. Everyone has the right to a good education, no matter who they are or what color their skin is. All right. So. And then, okay, so let me see how I asked you that. Why did why did it go to different schools? And you and you couldn't remember, but it was because it was against the law back. But then they changed the law. Um, oh, I was going to ask, how did Ruby get to school? Which I kind of already said, but do you remember how? She walked. Yep. Like I said, I already said that. So I was trying to look at all the... writing things. Yep, no, nope, she walked. And do you know why she prayed? You know, after... Her teacher stopped her and asked her, you know, why'd you talk to everyone? And she said, I didn't talk to them. I was praying. And you remember why she said she prayed? It had something to do with everyone yelling at her. Because they were being rude? Yeah, you know, I got, yeah, they were. Yeah, she, she prayed and asked God to forgive them because they didn't know any better that, you know, at the time, that was just what people thought was right, and it wasn't right. Like I said, we know that now. So when people were challenged, when they wanted to change what everyone knew, a lot of people got angry about it. And so she prayed for them to be forgiven, so, you know, because they didn't know that what they were doing is wrong, that they didn't understand that, you know, she was just a little kid. It said in the story she was in first grade, so she was your age. You know, I know you're seven, and it said she was six, but, you know, it's... She was in your grade, so let's see. What do I have going? So I, my biggest question is, um, how does that whole story make you feel? Hold on a second. I thought I heard something. I thought. Sorry. I was like, all right. So what I, I was asking the question, I lost it. Oh yeah. So how does how does what happened to Ruby in the story make you feel, or what does it make you think? Like, or I guess, how does it, how is it different from how things are today? Going in, like, to your school that you go to. How is that different? I'm sure even if you don't have any, I'm sure that you have, you know, other kids in your class who might be black or, you know, Hispanic or something like that. Even not in your class, I'm sure you do in your school. Is that true? You don't know if there's any black kids in your school or any Hispanic yeah, children. Yeah. So that's okay. Exactly. That's what I'm, that's what I was asking. How is things different today? Today, you know, we know better. We know that, you know, everyone deserves to go to a good school no matter where they're from. And like, so, you know, you have lots of kids back, you know, then that was crazy. That was something that wasn't considered to be, you know, that wasn't normal. And now we know better. All right. Let's see. All right, so I think that was the main thing of our story. Um, we could watch it again one more time if you want just for another review. Um, I know that, what time is it? All right, so, what's my train of thought? Okay, so just that's the story part. I did not put a wrap up very well. Okay, so like I said, we read today, we read the story about Ruby Bridges. We learned that, you know, back you know, about 50 years or so ago, that things were a lot different in schools, that little, you know, little children who might have been white or black, they didn't go to the same school. And usually the schools that the, the black children did go to weren't good schools. They were poor. They didn't, the schools were falling apart. They didn't have the books that they needed. They didn't have good teachers, you know, just because they didn't have all the resources that they need because just the way the laws were in place back then just made it really hard and things have really been fixed today and it's not perfect. We, I'm not going to sit back and say that everything's perfect today, but we definitely have came a long way from how it was in that story. So I hope you were able to learn a little bit something today and 
I wouldn't be surprised if you encounter this book again in the future. I definitely did when I was in school. You will learn way more about this topic as you go through school. The slavery and the segregation of people who were white and black is a big deal in history, and we're still solving it today. So let's say goodbye to our teacher, and I hope we had a good day. Bye. I'm the wrong way. It's okay.